Hi everyone, I'm Sosteen and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to finish the accessories and actually put on the Victorian lady doctor outfit. And I'll show off all the layers that it takes to make the dress look the way that it does. Now first off, for those of you who are new to this channel, you may not have been following with me while I sewed the dress together. Basically, as both a doctor and a costumer, I wanted to make a look that was reminiscent of the early female Victorian doctors who first graduated medical school. I go into more detail in my previous two videos where I also talk about the main inspiration, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. You can come back after watching those videos if you'd like, but if you just want to get skip right to the wearing of the dress and the cool accessories I bought, you're in the right place. Now about the dress. I sewed it as a classic 1886 gown. I really love this era because this particular silhouette from this particular year is just fabulous. One nickname I hear for this era is the sexy centaur lady look and I have to say I giggle at it all the time because it's just so accurate. It's the bustle era, meaning that there is a cage underneath all the gown layers that also give that butt, but it's also very different from the bustle eras that came before it. For instance, if you just go three years back to the year 1883, and yes, this is a year of the Gilded Age, the silhouette is very different. The cage is much smaller, it's just a little tiny little cage. It's still cute, but it doesn't give you that centaur look. If you go to the 1870s, you'll also see a bustle, but this one is a remnant of the crinoline cage that came before it. So as well as having the bump in the back, you get a larger cage and that flare in the front. The reason I picked 1886 for my Victorian lady doctor dress is because unlike the earlier 1870s look, the 1886 look is very serious. You no longer have rows and rows of bustles, bows, lace, and frivolities, which I love. But this 1886 look is all about being stately, tailored, and using masculine influences on women's fashion, which honestly sounds perfect for a Victorian lady doctor dress. First off, one accessory I absolutely needed was the classic doctor's bag. In fact, one of the reasons I decided to make this dress to begin with is because I want to wear a doctor's costume to wear to conventions while carrying a doctor's bag. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a convention when I heard, is there a doctor around here? And I dropped whatever I was doing to go running. They've taken a look at me and said, really? Are you really a doctor? And I had to explain, yes. In honor of my complimentary on-call work at conventions, I thought it would be really nice to carry around an old fashioned doctor's bag filled with everything that people may need. The doctor's bag is the quintessential doctor's accessory and you see it constantly in all sorts of art like Norman Rockwell's paintings and other classic art of doctors. The thing is, this particular accessory goes all the way back to at least the Hippocratic Corpus. Now, while everyone has heard of the Hippocratic Oath, a version of which I took when I graduated medical school, you may not have heard of the Hippocratic Corpus. It was written around 350 BC and it's a group of about 60 treatises in which doctors of the era described how medicine should be practiced. The Hippocratic Corpus said that a doctor should quote unquote carry a small case fitted to hold the necessary items required when visiting patients which of course is common sense but is also describing a doctor's bag by the way a quick aside um this quote gets used a lot and i love how we pick and choose our favorite bits from historic doctrines the same book suggests that you should we should be treating kidney stones with booze and specifically wine but Let's just take the Hippocratic Corpus with a grain of salt. But in any case, regardless, doctors still needed a way to carry all their tools and supplies and medicines with them when they went to go see patients. Most doctors in the Victorian age, some had offices, yes, but many made house calls and would ride about town in a horse and buggy. So having all your tools in one place with you was just plain useful. There were also bags in the 18th century and those bags vary to be sure, but there were examples like this one in museums. In the 1800s or 19th century, that's when a certain style became more famous, the Gladstone bag. This bag was originally designed by J.G. Beard in his shop in Westminster, England in 1859, named after the then prime minister, William Gladstone. It became quickly adopted by doctors all over because this particular style can be opened from the top for a fairly large opening and was very easy to access while being useful. When we think Victorian doctors, people almost always think of this 
design. Today, the Gladstone bag is made by a, a lot of different modern bag makers, and I personally do own one. However, I don't think that this particular shape is best suited for a lot of doctors today, since it still requires a lot of digging into the heart of the bag to get exactly what you want. And I wanted something that had a little more structure and organization and possibly compartments. Luckily, in the early 20th century, other doctors felt the same way and hard shelled bags with partitions were patented. These were used by a lot of doctors and I honestly can't find a particular year for this exact type of bag, but I do know that a company named Shell patented their design in 1937 and then named it MD in the year 1947, the year of that particular trademark. This is probably the second most famous type of doctor's bag. So while this ladder bag may not be the most historically accurate to 1887, I decided I want to go with one of these for my particular costume. Honestly, these bags are all over eBay and I got one and this one is in perfect working condition, except that one of the drawers was ripped out at some point and some sponges are put in or something. And now it's, it's horrible. I've tried vacuuming it and I did try to repair it. Unfortunately, never got to really work. So I'm just going to close this one and not use this particular partition until I can figure out something better. If you have any suggestions, please just let me know in the comments. After I decided this, I filled the rest with a bunch of other things, namely my stethoscope, along with a single ear stethoscope, more accurate to 1887, a flashlight for eye exams, um, which you often use when you want to check eye movements to look for a brainstem stroke, some alcohol swabs, a few, a few pair of gloves, Tylenol, ibuprofen for anyone who needs it, um, a, some Benadryl for, uh, for people who may have allergies, a pulse oximeter, some bandages, a chewable aspirin, and some N95 since I am a woman of the modern age. Not nearly as much as some of these modern day doctor's bag lists um, recommend, but enough to make me useful at conventions. I do plan on taking this with me when I go to Costume College next month, so if you are there, feel free to come by and grab some Tylenol. Now that we've filled my bag, let's go and talk about the other accessories for this outfit, namely the hat. Now, 1880s hats are just wonderful, and they're just fabulous on their own. They're generally really tall and have a fabulous wide brim and are trimmed with silks, feathers, ribbons, etc. In fact, when we talk about taxidermied animals, accenting hats, it's very frequently on hats of this era. While I didn't want a dead and stuffed bird on my hat, I did want a hat with the right shape and the right look. My friend Chantelle of 1886 Fashion and Costume On made this hat for me. She doesn't normally take commissions, but I was so honored when she agreed to take this one. Just a heads up, she also teaches classes and runs online conventions that teach all sorts of historical costuming bits. So if you're interested, you should absolutely check out her website, Costume On. So I will wear this as well. Now that I have everything I need, let's go try this on. First off, a Victorian lady doctor would start with her chemise. I actually don't have a Victorian chemise, believe it or not. So I'll start with my combinations, which are probably about 15 years too late, but I'll go with it. Next, remember the rule, boots before corsets. So I'll get my Victorian boots. Next, I put on my corset, which in my case is an 1880s corset made by Red Threaded. Note that these have a bosque in the front, so it's easy to put on. I lace myself in, which is relatively easy. Next on top of this, I put on my bustle cage. Some women might have worn it under petticoat, but I feel like my outfit is already heavy enough, so I chose to ignore that one. This bustle cage ties in the front and can be purchased off of Etsy. I have linked it below. I then put on my blouse. In this case, I'm wearing one from Historical Emporium, and I'll link that one below as well. On top of this, I'm wearing a cotton poplin petticoat to smooth out the lines of the bustle cage. This one I made using a pattern from Truly Victorian. Please note how the waistline for this petticoat is actually under my natural waist. I did that on purpose so I can minimize the bulk at the waist. On top of this, I'm putting on the underskirt. You'll notice that there is a gap in the pleats. Um, I did that on purpose so that the skirt has a little bit of movement. This part will all be covered by the overskirt anyway. I then put on the overskirt. The tension for the front overskirt apron is actually maintained with a little button in the back that pulls the two ends together so that the skirt stays up and shorter. I then just play with the pleats in the back until they fall in an appealing manner. Finally, I put on my waistcoat and adjust the lacing to whatever my weight is at the time. 
the jacket goes on next. Finally, a hat to show respectability, kept in place with a hat pin. I'm ready to go out to visit patients in their homes. Honestly, I am so in love with this whole look and I can't wait to go to conventions in it and show it off. Overall, this dress was a long time in the making just because the amount of hand sewing that went into this dress was well over 100 hours. But I think it was well worth it and I had a really good time because it just turned out just the way I wanted it to. Like a lot of Victorian outfits I do, I think it looks better, much better on a person and in motion than on the dress form, but that's just me. That's the outfit, guys. Honestly, putting this on makes me want to do a whole video about medicine in general. Um, if you'd like, I can do a talk about more medical history. If you're interested in seeing me do teach more doctoring and talk about historical doctor stuff, just let me know in the comments and I absolutely would love to. If you want me to do more 1880s bustle dresses, I would be all over that. Just let me know what you're interested in. I do take a lot of suggestions from the comments. I'm going to be back in a few weeks time. I'm hoping to get to a more regular schedule again. So please join me then. If you like this video, Remember to press like and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys!